So my parents got me this shirt and I can't tell if it's encouragement or, or a threat. Motherboards, where do they come from? Where do they go in your computer? Why are motherboards? There's a lot of deep diving detail you could go into about motherboards. I'm not an expert, so I'm not gonna get into that. Today we're gonna do motherboard basics and then go into a little more detail about the one that I purchased for my new rig, uh, the Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus with Wi-Fi. The primary purpose of your motherboard is to act as a physical information transportation system throughout your computer, moving data and distributing power to most of the components. If you're going with the analogy that the CPU is the brain, then your motherboard is the nervous system. So motherboards come in a number of different shapes and sizes. The most common that you're gonna be on the lookout for are ATX, micro ATX, and then mini ATX, depending on the size of the case that you are getting. You can tell by the way that they're named that someone in the computer industry is just messing with us. These are standard industry identifiers, by the way. From here on out in my explanations, a lot of the numbering and names are gonna be brand specific and you do have to look out for that throughout your whole build process. When trying to decide which board you're going to buy there's a lot of different factors you can weigh against each other. For instance if there's a particular case you've got your eye on that might limit you to a certain size of board or form factor as it's called. Um, the most vital prerequisite you're going to be deciding on is Intel or AMD. Once you've made that decision then you just make sure that the board you're picking out uh, can, has a socket that fits the CPU you're looking for uh, and then continue on from there. Luckily uh, PC Part Picker and even Newegg um, generally won't let you start picking motherboards that don't fit the CPU that you've chosen. It has it in that order of operations on the site. At this point you've probably noticed all the different alphanumeric designations associated with the motherboards you've been looking at b550 z690 these are the brand specific identifiers that i referred to earlier and it can be kind of confusing because for amd chips there's the x570 but on the intel side there's the h570 and they might not have similar features these various chipsets have varying compatibility that will determine what generation of components you can use, RAM, CPU, um, what kind of USB it supports, how many SATA ports it has. They all vary and those chipset identifiers will let you know which is what. Considering that the Wikipedia articles on both of these kinds of chipsets are like a mile long, this can be a quite daunting process. And you might be inclined to just try to narrow down on a reasonably priced one. But if future proofing and eventual upgrading is a concern for you, pay close attention to your chipset's compatibility features and what else that motherboard supports. Because as time goes by, you may want to upgrade to a particular component that that motherboard won't support. So there are a lot of great uh, articles videos, various content out there where experts will review these things right after they come out and explain all the pros and cons of that particular mother motherboard for perhaps your particular use. Next you're going to want to identify and verify all the other features and functions that you're going to need from your motherboard. Do you need Wi-Fi? Does the case you're getting have a USB-C port on the front of it? And therefore, does your motherboard have a USB-C header for that to route to? Um, your RAM and GPU, what generation of those items do you plan on getting and do they fit the motherboard that you're going to get? Some motherboards are, are backwards compatible in some areas. For instance, you can get a Generation 3 M.2 SSD and plug that into a Gen 4 um, slot. But for instance, you can't plug a DDR3 RAM into a DDR4 RAM slot. So it's a lot of compatibility, double checking back and forth that you're gonna have to do there to make sure everything you want is gonna work. Once you've got the full list for your build put together, uh, go find a Facebook group or a forum somewhere, put the list of it out there and ask others, how does everything here look? 
any bottlenecking compatibility issues. People love giving feedback. You'll probably get some good responses there and make sure that you haven't paired up a couple of things that aren't going to work well together. All right, now for part two, my personal take on the Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus with Wi-Fi that I got for my new and first PC build recently. Um, I covered a little bit in my PC build video, uh, but I wanted to go in a little, little bit more depth here for anyone who's thinking about getting it. Um, first impressions, it's a great looking board, and if you have a case with a tempered glass side panel and you get to look at it, it's fantastic. It even has some RGB built into it. Um, not super flashy or, or impactful, but if you have a white case, it reflects really well and not a bad feature to have. Comes with a software called Armory Crate that lets you customize all the RGB, but then also monitor all the functions, temperature, things like that. Um, when I received it, I noticed that some of the stickers on it were in reference to an older version of the AMD processor, the 3000 series. I used a 5000 series uh, CPU and those two different CPUs are going to require different BIOS. When this is initially released in 2019, it would have had the BIOS on it for a 3000 series processor. If you get a motherboard like that and you're using a newer generation of processor, you're not going to be able to boot it up, so I'm told. You would actually have to drop in an old processor, update the BIOS, and then drop in your new processor. I was extremely worried that was something I was going to have to fumble my way through. Fortunately, I noticed after receiving it that there were some stickers added on after manufacture. This was clearly sitting on the shelf somewhere and then pulled and updated, put back in the box, and they added some stickers. There's Windows 11 ready, and then up here, Ryzen 5000 series ready. So they had updated the BIOS before I got it, which I was really thankful for, and I'll explain a little bit more about why in a bit. Um, features and functions wise, this motherboard has everything you're going to need for a 5000 series processor uh, until you're ready to upgrade to the next generation. All the uh, ports, plugs, and headers are of the latest generation that that processor can handle. There's no mixed. Some motherboards will have a PCIe Gen 4 slot and a Gen 3 slot. All of them are Gen 4. Um, so this will last you as long as you need it until you are ready to upgrade to the new AMD 7000 or higher, um, DDR5, all that great stuff. So it's it's got some element of future proofing and, and it's going to be a little less expensive than all the new gen stuff dropping right now actually um, the back io has seven usb ports on the back one of them is usb c in total i think there are a total of 13 usb ports you could have hooked up directly to this motherboard not including obviously a usb hub that you were going to uh, plug into it um, the motherboard headers are USB 2 and then um, the case you get if it has USB 3 ports on the front of it there is a header for that as well um, let's see what's next the install process super easy the screw holes to attach it to your case are very well highlighted and have a little bit of protectant around the edge of some kind of metal shielding or something that made it super easy to identify and you weren't going to scratch up your uh, PCB board as you try to screw it in. The headers were like half of them were labeled and then the other half weren't and I had to keep referring to some kind of diagram to figure out which one they are. Honestly I haven't used most of the headers. Uh, they There's a lot of extra um, headers for fans for your case that I haven't used. There's uh, the USB 2 that I haven't used and uh, something called iCom or something. I, I'm not even sure what it's for. And most of the diagrams I'm finding uh, 
don't explain that. It's got the four RAM slots like a lot of them these days. The box says the max RAM you can have is 64 gigs, although online in the Asus site it says uh, 128. So I'm not sure there. Maybe that might be something the 5000 series offered that the 3000 didn't when this first dropped on the market. So uh, as for my general notes or concerns, uh, the cons to the pros, um, my case came with a USB-C port on the front of it, and there is no USB-E header on the motherboard for that cable to run to. So if you have a USB-C port on your case anywhere, there's nowhere for that plug to go. Um, the Pro has that and some other things, and I'll talk about that. Um, but I could get a USB-E slash C PCI card to slip in there and run that too. Um, and I may look into that. It's about $40, 40 to $50 on Amazon. And I haven't looked anywhere else really. Might be worth it. Or I could, you know, you could just, you could just upgrade to the Pro and it'll have that header in there for you. Should be great. Um, there's no support for Thunderbolt. And I know that might not be relevant to you, but for the last couple of years, I've been using this Lenovo Thunderbolt uh, USB dock that a friend gave me, and it's been fantastic. I use it on my HP Envy laptop, which is also AMD. So I didn't think this would be any different, but Asus does not have Thunderbolt support for their AMD chips uh, on their motherboards. So if you were to get an Intel CPU, and for instance, the Z590, uh, Asus Tough Gaming, basically a very similar version uh, for, for Intel processors, you could use some uh, something Thunderbolt. But as of right now, it's not supported, and that's a huge uh, loss for me because I, I wasn't anticipating that. But I'll survive, as it were. Uh, other things about that uh, Z590, if you were thinking about going Intel, because um, it is a tough gaming uh, motherboard. It has a Gen 4 and a Gen 3 PCI slot, and all of the M.2 uh, memory slots are Gen 3. So there's a big trade-off there. There might be a newer version of that, I'm not sure, but that was the one that I had looked at and wasn't willing to <laughs> dismantle my computer and downgrade to that just for Thunderbolt. I just get a USB dock and put it on my desk so I don't have to have all these cables running to, um, you know, over to my case from my desk. Uh, bottom line, the Pro has only two things that the Plus doesn't. A BIOS flash button, which would have assisted me if the BIOS on it were older, because then I don't need to drop in an older chip. Apparently, I, and I'm not sure exactly how it's done. Uh, but apparently you put in a USB stick that has a new BIOS on it and you hit that flash button and it'll update. Whereas the Plus doesn't have that. And then there's that USB-C header on the board if you have a USB-C port on your case. Those are the only two differences. So if you really want those, pay the extra 20 some odd bucks for the Pro. If they don't really matter to you, stick with the Plus. Uh, bottom line, it's uh, so far in the month I've been using it, a great motherboard, and uh, should serve me probably you know, seven, eight years or so until I'm ready to upgrade to the AMD 7000 or whatever the you know, next generation is by then. All right, well, that's everything. If you're new to this whole PC thing and this was helpful to you, I'd love to hear about that. If you're an expert and I've made some horrible errors and said some things that were not entirely accurate, also, please tell me. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.